Right before the fight with Scathe in the Dot Hack Infection game, there is a news article about two high school students who were found unconscious in their club room. One regains consciousness at the hospital, and the other still remains in a coma. Dot Hack Liminality follows Mai Minase, the one who regains consciousness. She is a musician, but after the circumstance, she backs away from music. Her friend Masia finds her near the river. It's here she feels safe from the incessant noise that began after what had happened. Masia asks when Mai plans to come back to school, and her response is that she will go back to school tomorrow. Elsewhere, in San Diego, California, we see a man getting knocked down. The man standing above him is telling him to quit his search. The man on the floor is Junichiro Tokuoka. He learns of a company secret and is being beaten by security off the company site. Later, he flies to Japan and catches Mai on her way to school. He questions her, asking if she was the one who was found unconscious at school. She tries to brush him off, but he keeps pressuring her until she runs off into the school. Once in class, she gets pestered by her classmates and decides to make her way back to the clubhouse, which has been boarded off. It is here that Tokuoka and Mai meet again, but before she can leave, he holds on to her to see if he can get any more questions from her. He brings up the MMORPG, The World. It's here that she knows that he may know more about what's going on than she thought. But before any questioning can start, Masaya intervenes. Tokuoka introduces himself to Masaya, but Masaya is hesitant and requests that he leave the premises. Masaya and Mai meet in a quiet place to discuss everything. If the world has anything to do with why they went unconscious, then there may be more information out there. Mai can't remember any specific information about the game, since it was her first time experiencing it. Mai heads to an internet cafe to see what Tokuoka's connection is to the game, and discovers that he was the lead programmer. While rushing home, she is stopped by some classmates. They try to talk to her about the music competition coming up, but with other things on her mind, she continues to race home. Mai calls Masuya and tells him everything she found out about Tokuoka. However, Masuya tells Mai that she has the option to do absolutely nothing and let Tokuoka do his own thing. Masuya tells Mai that his father, who was the doctor treating her during the episode, wants to do another checkup on her to make sure she is still doing okay. The girl who saw Mai on the street earlier turns out to be Masaya's sister. She has concerns that Mai will quit playing the violin and urges her brother to try to convince Mai to not quit. First thing in the morning, Masaya visits Mai to give her more information on Tokuoka. He is no longer employed with the makers of the game, the CC Corporation, after which he begins to leave. But before heading out, he tells Mai to not give up playing the violin, even if she decides to quit playing in class, to not give it up entirely. Mai gets her checkup with the doctor, and thinks perhaps there might have been something subliminal in the game that caused the incident, but the doctor says that anything subliminal hasn't been proven to work and is just coincidental. After her checkup, she goes to her boyfriend Tomonari's hospital room, but as she enters the room, Tokuoka pulls her in and tries to keep her quiet. He too came to visit him, so he could see for himself the damage that the world has been inflicting on players. Mai accuses Tokuoka of intentionally causing players to get hospitalized, and Tokuoka disagrees, trying to convince Mai that he is on her side. During their argument, the boy's heart rate starts to increase. This causes a pause in their current argument, and they begin to wonder if he's still in the game, and something there is causing his heart rate to change. Mai agrees to help Tokuoka, so they get started on their investigation, and they start with logging into Tomonari's game account. However, when Tokuoka tries to gather further information, an error occurs that causes the program to shut down. Tokuoka mutters, not again. Frustrated, he leaves and Mai goes after him. She asks what he meant by not again, and wonders how long he's been trying to figure this out. Tokuoka mentions that there are six people in Japan, all sharing the same comatose condition, all while playing the world. And not a single person has come out of the coma yet, but somehow Mai was not like the others. Later that night, Mai has a dream of a mysterious girl and is woken up when the ominous noise chimes. She heads downstairs and finds a tuning fork. She strikes the tuning fork and listens to it. Later that day, she meets up with Masaya and tells him that the sound that has been pestering her is an A and C major scale, the sound used to tune musical instruments. Masaya recalls the first thing she said when she became conscious was, Ah, Masaya thinks it must have something to do with the German alphabet. It might be possible that the noise is the reason for falling unconscious, but not enough information has been gathered to make that connection. Although Mai does have incredible hearing, perhaps her training in music has contributed to it. Masaya asks if Mai knows anything about Tomonari's character Sieg. 
named after Siegfried from the German music drama The Ring of the Nibelungen. You can actually see Sieg early on in Dot Hack Infection, talking about the cat player Mia in the root town. Maya is familiar with the music drama since it was something her grandfather loved. Maya grows concerned that he may never wake up again. Masaya promises that he won't let Tomonari stay the way he is, and he feels guilty since he was the one who got Tomonari into the game in the first place. Later that night, Toku Oko calls Mai at home to apologize for the way that he had acted. She accepts his apology and tries to hang up the phone, but Toku Oka takes this opportunity to ask a favor of Mai. He asks if he can go into the clubhouse where it all started. Thinking that it might be a special situation, he wanted to use the same machine to see if he can replicate the same problem. Toku Oka wants to single out if the game is causing the problem or perhaps something else. Mai and Masuya go back to the hospital where Tomonari is at, and Mai tells Masuya what Toku Oka plans to do. Masuya is upset that she has kept in contact with Toku Oka. Mai wants to figure out what is the cause for everything, but Masuya tries to convince Mai out of going for fear that Tokuoka is just too suspicious, and that no way a game can cause players to go comatose. Mai regrets informing Masuya of the plan, and decides to exclude him from any future plans. Masuya waits in Tomonari's room, and recalls when he was building a computer, and how Tomonari was talking about how he had asked Mai to be his girlfriend. Masuya seems to be jealous, since it seems like he has a crush on Mai. When Mai gets home, her mother is waiting there for her. She wanted to discuss with Mai about her absence from music class. She understands that she went through a hard few weeks, but believes of all things that she should still be playing the violin. Her mother expects her to be a soloist, and if she declines to practice, she might never become one in the future. Mai never showed interest in becoming a soloist, but just liked the violin. Her mother aggressively tells her that if she only thinks of it as a hobby, then she should quit. Her grandfather was also a hobbyist, and it seems like her mother wasn't pleased with his life choices. Displeased with the conversation, Mai's mother leaves the room and shouts that if she decides to not practice anymore, then she won't need her violin anymore. Not sure since it was off screen, but she was either threatened to take away the violin, or even worse, to destroy it. Later that night, Mai waits outside of the school in the rain, while Toku Oka pulls up. Before heading inside the school, Mai asks Tokuoka what his reason for wanting to figure this out, and he tells her that his reason is the same as hers, to figure out the reason. She isn't satisfied with that, but Tokuoka continues with trying to get inside the school, making it inside the school grounds. They see the door has been boarded up. Tokuoka isn't sure how to get in, but Mai shows him around back, and shows that there is a hidden panel on the wall to help them sneak in. Tokuoka looks around, and starts up the computer. Mai proceeds to ask about why Tokuoka is going out of his way to find out what happened. Tokuoka responds with fear. I'm afraid of why this has happened, and why nobody realized it, and that even I failed to realize it all this time. Tokuoka was able to log into Tomonari's account and access a clone of his character Seek. To get an exact replicated test case, Mai will need to log in with him, just like when it first happened. Maya is aware of this, and even though she may fall unconscious again, she is willing to take that risk. Tokuoka and Mai enter the game to go to the field Chosen Hopeless Nothingness. This is the exact same field that you go to to fight Scaife in the game Die Hack Infection. While exploring, Mai notices a shadowy figure with the wand that Scaife uses. Tokuoka brushes it off as a minor character. Entering the dungeon, Mai notices the sound that she has been haunted by for the past few weeks, the tuning fork noise. Tokuoka doesn't seem to notice it, but only hears background music. Mai panics and tells Tokuoka to run, but Tokuoka can't sense where the danger is coming from, since he has no way to sense the danger looming nearby. Before anything can happen, Mai throws her headset off. Looking at Tokuoka, she notices he is struggling in the game. His breathing has gotten heavier, and he begins to drool. She takes his headset off and tries to remove the controller out of his hands, but he seems to be having a tight grip on it. He falls over in his chair, and she begins to slap him to break whatever has gotten a hold of him, his hand still moving on the controller, as if he is still connected in the game. She pulls on the controller cable, causing the monitor to fall, and rips the controller out of its connector port. No matter what she tries seems to have any effect. She kicks the monitor and cracks another monitor screen open. Even the computer falls off the desk. Masuya rushes past the school and notices a car out front. He makes his way to the clubhouse and sees Mai struggling to pull Tokuoka out of the secret panel on the side of the club room. Masuya, concerned, 
asks if everything is alright, and Mai tells him that the world isn't just some ordinary game. Water rushing off the roof splashes onto Tokuoka, snapping him out of whatever trance had a hold of him. Seeing Tokuoka wake up gives Mai hope that if he can break free, then so can Tomonari. Tokuoka aches after everything that had happened while he wasn't conscious and asks Mai if she still wants to stick around to figure everything out. Both agree that they are going to figure it out since what they've seen is only the beginning. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see all the rest of the Dot Hack content, I've made a playlist and it should show up on the screen right now. Until next time, have a good rest of your day.